Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be a match between Flash in the upper right hand corner as this user ID, which is known as Black Taxi, apparently. He's going to be, he's been playing random on a ladder at a very high level. He is opted as the, so he's got White Zorg this time, upper right hand corner. This is on Polypoid, by the way. He's going up against Ozium. I don't know anything about Ozium. In fact, uh, I don't even know if Ozium's Korean. I assume he is. He's high level guy on the ladder. I can't tell you anything about his style of play. All I can tell you is you're probably here to watch Flash anyway. So, and I don't, I honestly don't know whether, whether this will be a victory or not. Zerg, I hear, is the race he's had the most trouble with. Zerg does tend to, for the other two races, tend to be the one that has kind of the most difficult, they say, everybody's off race is Protoss, right? And then uh, beyond that, but it's rare for a Terran to off race Zerg. Well, the Rhett did it, and a few others, but anyway. Exploding Kakru in the bottom right hand corner to give us a nice... Anyway, one interesting thing about this style of play is by playing random, it really does force your opponent into certain build orders that are a little bit safer. And let's see if... So it is going to be a gateway first, Ozzyam moving out to scout, but the secondary thing is, is, is he going to find the Overlord along the way? And we're seeing a pool opener here from Flash. And it's, it's kind of interesting because... From a pro we'll see how this plays out. That was an overpool build. I don't know if Ozzyam went random either. I assume he didn't. He ended up uh, Protoss overall. It looks like he's checking the corners. Maybe he knew it was an Overlord. Because uh, he must have known that this was this must have been a Zerg select, because he wouldn't have gone for this maneuver otherwise. He wouldn't have peaked at the nine o'clock base and then started cycling uh, across the board otherwise. So I'm assuming Flash actually intentionally chose Zerg in this matchup, but actually drops a bit of the advantage overall because there's certain build orders that an opponent won't engage in so point being this looks like it was a zerg select and this yeah just looking for what the opening was i mean to mind read out through so it looks like bottom right hand corner flash did not see that probe crossing so it didn't get the adjustment rapidly i think ozm saw that zergling so saw the saw the drone so even if it was random he knows now he's going to produce two zealots it looks like right off the bat move them cross position not dropping any sort of gas behind this. Probe able to wander up to find the hatchery and just two zerglings that were not able to create a blockade to deny any sort of information. The lack of gas is going to be a really big indicator here that either Flash is going for a very zergling heavy build or in fact he's going for three base play. And I think we see this drone here so we know that it is in fact going to be three base play. Usually if you're going for a zergling all in, even with that you're gonna drop that geyser, you're going to produce more zerglings initially, although we do see some additional zerglings being constructed. The zealots making the way across. Nexus morphing in. Two zerglings look like they're going to be able to slip through the lines, but we'll see how Flash deals with the zealots that are making the way across in the meantime. So zerglings able to walk right in, might get some harassment. We have four more zerglings out on the field. This zealot is unfortunately going to engage in not the best scenario, so the Zergling's going to get a pretty decent engagement right there. Nice little bit of micro. These two Zerglings have yet to engage the probe lines to inflict some damage. Nice micro there by Oz, I have to say, and it looks like the probe and two Zealots kind of wander into the 3 o'clock base to create some disruption along that 3 o'clock hatchery. Maybe force some more Zerglings. More Zerglings indeed are running up. The weakened Zealot is going to go ahead and pocket itself at the 3 o'clock location. The Zerglings now getting hunted down. This is a lot of disruption in mining time. The Zealot looking to engage as well. The Simulator being dropped. Looks like the Zealots and Probe have been cleaned up the 3 o'clock. Not a lot of damage there from Flash. He, he's not got the most amazing drone count right here at 12, but isn't too shabby. He's continuing to mine. He has managed to eliminate all vision on the map, which oftentimes for ZVP is exactly what you want if you're going to open up a potential 973 play. Trying to get a good look at the full amount of Zerglings we've got left over. It looks like we've got seven Zerglings, plus the two in the main. These Zerglings providing some nice scouting and disruption. And I'm almost wondering if Flash is going to wait. So the, seeing the cybernetic score drop, I wonder if he was waiting to see the cybernetic score, etc., to maybe make the option to go to Lair or decide for Hydralis play. Forge at the natural expansion. Zealot's now plugging the gap. No second gas as of yet for Oz. So it looks like he's maybe going for more of the standard single Corsair into Gateway Flood style, potentially. Although it's a little bit early to tell in that regard. Flash droning up a bit behind this. 
making his way till uh, up to 20. And let's see if he goes for, yeah, the, the Mutal's follow-up. So Cybernetic Score finished. Zergling's still alive and just dancing around. I wonder if they are just going to sit around just to purely provide the scouting information or if they're going to try that. So not able to disrupt the Stargate. So Stargate up. Plenty of time for Flash to maybe get an advantage in the air if he wants it. If he wants to play towards that four hatch uh, Mutalisk style. He has dropped the Spire at the natural expansion. Got about that 21, 22. Usually it's like the 20 to 23 drone point you'll see in that stereotypical build order. The Zerglings, looks like Zergling speed has kicked in. That's actually a really big indicator. Maybe just to keep these Zerglings even more active. And maybe, wow, they're going to be here a long time to maybe even disrupt the the Zergling Flood. Second gateway actually being dropped at the natural along with the pylon. Finally, the second assimilator being dropped overall. Fourth hatchery already on the way alongside that Spire Soul. I assume we're just going to see some initial Scourge and that style of play. We do have the Corsair being built. The other advantage of these Zerglings on the ground is, is they're going to be able to see that Corsair timing potentially. Might even be able to see the angle of attack. Plus one weapons. Seeing that whirl. Finally getting that first probe kill. Seeing that world's big, also see the Citadel of Adun down to recognize that it's either going to be High Templar play as far as a follow-up or potential Dark Templar play. Usually this is an indicator, the plus one weapon upgrade in potential that Protoss is going to make movements for air dominance and oftentimes the follow-up is, yeah, get the Hydralisk then and make your way towards five hatch Hydralisk. Second extractor being dropped though. Maybe... So maybe we're going to see six hatch, so this is usually to be a little bit more mutalisk heavy or maybe even go for more upgrade heavy play. We do have an evolution chamber down, so it looks like it is going to be five hatch hydralisk with some upgrades behind this. Corsair able to make its way all the way to the front. The Scourge are going to spawn at that natural expansion. Let's see if the Corsair are not able to dodge whatsoever, just full on face planting into those Scourge. Plus one, weapon, uh, plus one air weapons about halfway finished. The Corsair remaining at the front. Photon cannon warping in to respect that threat. Looks like the Zerglings were wiped out. This is no, this isn't plus one weapons. This is a ways off plus one weapons and I th don't think Zealot leg speed is even upgrading. The Zerglings keeping an eye on these Zealots, but Flash, yeah, going up to, to six hatch play. He could go either direction with Hydralisks or Mutalisks at this stage. The Zerglings fanning their way back out. They've lost track of the Zealots overall. Doesn't look like this is really going to force a lot of units out. Overlord speed also being produced, which leads me to believe this is going to be more Hydralisk transition heavy than Mutalisk transition heavily, uh, heavy. So yeah, six hatcheries up. Hydralisk upgrades overall. Plus one weapons. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be straight transition to spines. Plus one weapon now finishing. There's a good amount of zealots out there. So... But not a... This is off just the two gateways. We haven't seen a lot... Now we're seeing the gateway flood to go up to, I assume we're going to see a six. Six overall, so two at the natural and then four in the main. And some decent Corsair. We got four Corsair out. Templar Archives is just finishing, plus one weapons just about finished. So we're going to see maybe a 930 Zealot timing out at some location. And I don't know, and it, Zealot leg speed isn't, I don't even know that it's going to be there. The three o'clock location is pretty well defended. We got a lot of Hydralisks there, and this is a pretty solid Sim City. That something colony in the rear. Good amount of Hydralisks at the natural expansion as well. A little bit more open with that slight gap. But really the hope of this is to... And the Corsair fleet staying at home base. Interestingly enough. So this is an odd... Uh, this I, I guess this is going to turn into uh, a degree of a criticism of Oz's style of play. Is that he's investing pretty heavily into Corsairs. But not as of yet utilizing them. And in the meantime the Zealots running out in forward field. Zealot leg speed now kicking on. But he is getting absolutely mauled by these Hydralisks. Complete Hydralisks around. And now the Zealots caught between point A and point B. It looks like they're running towards that natural expansion. With this, honestly, it could turn right back into a contain. The, Hyd the Corsair is running back out. But now you have a massive, massive Hydralisk army making its way to the natural expansion. But you have two High Templar in position, but Psystorm is not yet finished, so they could wreak a lot of havoc and potentially do a lot of dancing. The Zealots getting caught by the Hydralisks again at that 9 o'clock location. The Corsairs, one of them getting wiped out. They haven't really done anything, and Flash feeling very comfortable expanding because he's got total map control right this second. Two additional cannons dropping, and these Psystorms, ooh, good Psystorm. 
initially, weakening a good amount of the Hydralisks, and that is going to back Flash off. He doesn't really have a massive army. The Corsair is finding that hatchery somewhat exposed. The Zelts are making a beeline there, but we do have a Hydralisk defense force on the corner with that plus one weapons and doing a really good job of matching that army mo movement. It looks like they are potentially going to get trapped in right here. And yeah, this is, oof, this is dangerous territory. You got to keep those zealots active. More zealots and High Templar moving out on the field now to maybe create some pressure. But right now, Flash's drone count is absolutely phenomenal. He's close to matching his opponent. However, he's down a good amount of supply. About 10 supply. and it. But a lot of that supply is in Corsairs that really have not done anything. They've not... I don't think they've even sniffed an Overlord. And so we got a four High Templar. Maybe they can land some storms, but this is a wide open area and a difficult place to engage. They're just getting kind of corners. Nice side storm to the north right there. But still, this uh, looks like an, enough of an attack force that it might get overwhelmed by Flash regardless. But yeah, the High Templar exposed to the rear. And so the Archon's being wiped out. The Hydra's also retreating to the left and able to pick off some Corsair. They're trying to work on that Overlord for unknown reasons, because there's not really a lot of, I mean, maybe just get the Overlord kill, but there's not a lot of high, uh, Dark Templar behind this. And with that, the supply gap really closing. And it looks like Flash, this entire time, also left a good grouping of Hydralisks at that three o'clock location. He's got Lurker Tech up, is making his way towards, it looks like plus one Carapace. I'm trying to see if there, yeah, there is another Evolution Chamber out. And he's already making his way to Hive and getting that plus one melee. So he could do a transition to Ultralisk or uh, Heavy Zergling play, it looks like a third is going up as far as a follow-up, but Flash already has the worker lead, and it really is up to Oz to go up and make the economic difference. That will definitely help. Putting Flash into the red, able to wipe out that lurker before it's able to burrow, so getting some nice exchange right there, and the rest of Flash's army moving up to evict the rest of that attack force. Not really any High Templar to kind of get some pot shot damage and the overlord protection discipline is fantastic right now a lot of hydralisks there to defend it right now though let's see oz looking for some sort of pocket and he's going to double expand going to grab the nine o'clock as well while flash is playing somewhat more defensively so he's saying okay you want to play the defensive economic game i'll just go ahead and make my way to late game maybe go straight to get that reaver style play up Flash a little bit in the dark, so I'm not sure if he's detected that 9 o'clock or not, but he, I think he's got to assume, seeing how small this forward army is, that something's up. Some Zerglings are making their way. Yeah, checking out additional expansions. Looks like they are going to be able to cycle in, and I like the Corsair placement now. Actually, to see those Zerglings preemptively, that's going to send Oz's army retreating that 9 o'clock. Zelt's potentially setting up to blockade. Flash has not confirmed that 9 o'clock base as of yet, but he's got thoughts about it. Yeah, moving up. Zergling's able to move in. They're going to at least be able to confirm this base. They're not going to be able to get a lot else accomplished. But I think that scouting information may be, despite losing a lot of Zerglings for it, may be worthwhile. So now he knows that it's turning into more of a, a macro race overall. And with that flash, has I got to say, he's got the lead. Let's see if the weapon up... So plus one weapon, plus one armor. And this is against Zerglings that already have plus one carapace. They are going to have plus one weapons in not too long. Additional macro hatches planted down. We also have a defiler mount and a third evolution chamber. Versus how many forges do we've got? We've got the one forge, two forges up and running. So Flash should, in theory, eventually outpace his opponent. Plus, he's got a 10 worker lead. Just checking out additional expansions and willing it just sending out Zerglings, it looks like, to try to deny lone probes moving out and taking additional expansions. Just playing it long and safe. Some high Templar at the 9 o'clock location to provide some defense right there. But with that defiler support. Consume finishing in not too long. Flash is going to be in a very strong position, especially because he's got the decent supply lead where he can just start knocking down expense, uh, expansions with Dark Swarms and these Zerglings, especially because they're going to have that Adrenal upgrade and they just shred everything, particularly buildings, when they get an opportunity. Oz pocketing that Zelt to try to get at least a more favorable exchange in that bottom right-hand corner. Moving in with a single Zelt that's going to get absolutely swarmed. Yeah, spotting that and backing off. It looks like he's going to try to warp some cannons in, maybe to hide this, and move the rest of his army to maybe establish this 6 o'clock base. But this has given time for Flash to go ahead and make his way towards Tier 3 tech. 
trying to sweep in. It looks like he's going to get a single zealot, but can expend a lot of other zerglings behind it. This is honestly expendable resources for Flash overall. I'm looking for the transition towards the robotics bay late game. So we have the robotics facility here, but it looks like it's going to be mostly an attempt at using Psystorm to try to defend. And that is going to actually work out because right now Flash sending mostly just zerglings across the field. Checking out that 12 o'clock location. Looks like he wants to go ahead and grab that base for himself. Again, to continue to play the long-term macro war. Additional upgrades kicking in, which are going to make those lurkers hit even harder. It's funny, unless they're burrowed, I can't check their weapons. So we got plus two spines overall, and that's still going to lead. So plus two armor out for Oz, but still like matching. So the unit per unit, it is going to match. And once defilers start taking the field, could start getting really, really ugly. Usually even supply means Zerg is ahead in this matchup. Some Zerglings trying to press through. And again, I think this is mostly time-building maneuvers. More Zerglings starting to press out in the field because this is just allowing Flash to establish Lurkers and everything else here at the 12 o'clock. Flooding, just checking out additional bases, trying to make sure that he maintains the count. Right now, the main is going to mine out for Oz overall. That's going to put him on four bases. In the meantime, Flash, this is just what happens with Zerg. You have the resources overall, so he's going to have five bases and potentially a sixth in the upper left-hand corner, although there's a Dark Templar waiting to go ahead and wipe that out. He's still got a very healthy drone count sizable army really well defended up and now the defiler is starting to get some consumption out of my almost i'm honestly waiting for an ultra sten considering flash's economic position and not too long nidus canal also up and a couple zerglings just pocketing it looks like dark temple to try to deny top right or bottom right top left a few zerglings acting as overlords right this second to spot the army movements mid map and a big plague oof so Zerglings to spot, and then a massive plague to follow it up, catching a lot of units. There are a good amount of Archons as part of this, and that can help at least soften the damage of some of those plagues, since they don't have uh, any a lot of base health to really chew through. Units moving to the bottom right, there's still not any detection as yet. The Corsair trying to take out that Overlord. Overlord going to sneak in, although not checking as of yet. Oz able to create some denial here, just moving the entirety of his army up. And Flash saying, okay, you move your army that way. I'm just going to expand top left then. I'm going to pick out a Dark Templar. It looks like top left as well. So Flash doing a good job of just being where Oz isn't right this second. And sending Zerglings absolutely everywhere in the meantime. One big size storm, Two big size storms. How many size storms are left? It looks like we've got one more size storm behind this and a Lurker dropping behind this. And even without the Dark Swarm cover, quickly able to wipe out the cannon line and drop the lurkers behind this. So Oz retreating from the bottom right, moving back to try to defend his mineral only third. Beautiful side storms over the lurker lines. Look like they're gonna clean that up. And there was a nice counterattack top left to deny additional base. So good play, more lurkers moving up. Char very characteristic flash aggression here. So going to an overall win for Oz here. So even though he ended up having a little bit of economic disruption at the mineral only, He's regained the supply lead. He didn't lose a lot of probes, so he's able to redrop that. And on top of that, he was able to drop both the hatchery in the upper left and deny the hatchery bottom right. The Zealot's going to get wiped out as far as a continuation. Flash moving right back out with more Zerglings. And it looks like they're on the move command, finally now starting to attack and engage. But they're coming in a little bit piecemeal, which is allowing these Archons to just feast and chew through them. And it looks like he wants to take another shot at that mineral only. And the Zealots, this time, along that line, holding... Some Hydalisks on the low ground. And some follow-up Psystorm. Going to be able to defend that. Going to try to re press right back into that bottom right. Maybe to grab something. Recapturing top left. Dropping two hatcheries at that location. And this time going to get away with it. As Oz doesn't have... I think an, he's got a 20 supply lead. But he's got to keep that army bunched up. Right now worried about a counterattack. So hasn't been able to venture out to stop top left. And if... Flash is able to establish and hold top left and start pushing out units and see if that Corsair is able to make its way out and discover it. He's going to check out that 12 o'clock location, see decent saturation there, but let's see if he moves top left because he's got to do something about these expansions. It looks like he's already making motions there in anticipation of this and Overlord getting caught is noticing that army and Flash starting to move out. The defilers could be really key in this engagement and the lack of observer, the observer actually trailing quite a bit. If that Observer gets picked off, that might be it for this defense. There's a lot of Psystorm. It looks like a Defiler getting hit. Another Defiler eating a bit of Psystorm as well as some Hydralisks. High Templar finally getting picked off in between here. A few empty blind Psystorms 
And with that, actually, Oz retreating doesn't like his odds. So Flash looks like he's going to be able to defend, and that might be the game-winning maneuver, to be honest. Oh, we're getting killed by Psystorm, not something you see every day. Zelt's getting away from him. So now, natural expansion is gone. Main has just a few minerals left. Mineral only still healthy. Six o'clock location is somewhat healthy. Now we're seeing the Reavers out in play. Nine o'clock base is up and running. The Corsair able to see that the bases are up, but not yet saturated top left. But the main out for Flash, natural expansion looking a little bit thin, but he's still gonna have four or five fresh bases to work with. A 10 drone lead behind that, and I think he's approaching max upgrades across the board. So yeah, he's got the, uh, does he already have the maxed out spine? Yeah, it's already, in moments, he will be fully upgraded across the board. And we're, are we seeing full upgrades across? No, we're seeing a delay on armor and shield, it looks like. So Flash has the overall economic upgrade, has the armor upgrade, has the supply lead. Wanted to say upgrade there for a second. These Reavers are going to be absolutely critical. Maybe, do we have shuttle speed upgrading? Trying to find it. Yeah, shuttle speed's on the way. They've got to do something at some of these bases, and it's going to be challenging because Flash has done a fantastic job of just keeping an eye on the army. Ooh, does Oz even realize that this bottom right hand base is not being grabbed? He's setting up, dropping a pylon, looking to hopefully grab that, but I don't know if he realizes that there's some lurkers, some hydralisks, and some zerglings already established in bottom right. So starting to set up, dropping the reaver short. He, a nice plague dodge right there with the reaver. Lurker is eating some damage on the forward lines. Looks like the Zealot eating a little bit of fire. There the Plague finally hits the Reavers. A good Psystorm follow-up. And decent trade overall. Oz holding back a lot of his army. But he needs to make something happen here. And this is a lot of Lurkers there to the top left that he's got to run through. Unfortunately, he's moving a little bit too slow. I think to really punish... Flash, because Flash can rebuild rather... He's in the difficult situation where... Ooh, and eating more plagues, where he's got to dodge plague, make something happen with the, this army, be somewhere where Flash isn't, and on top of that, refill... No, make sure he doesn't lose his army at a distance location, because otherwise, Flash will just be able to refill rather rapidly and overrun him. So very challenging situation right now. Some Psystorm dropping. Archon's able to get there. That's at least going to empty that base. It looks like he's going to go ahead and pull back, seeing the drones on retreat. Going back to the low ground, so maybe the Dragoons can get some additional damage. Lurkers moving back in. Flash instantly resaturating. This is kind of interesting. We've got the cannons bottom right still. Good amount of Archons in between here. And the more Archons you have, the, the more that tends to... It doesn't completely negate Dark Swarm because you have it shifted, but the explosive damage is still there. That's certainly enough to make the Zerglings explode near instantaneously. So once you have a... So if it, they kind of scale pretty well, honestly, late game versus Zerg. But it looks like they're going to be able to move in, get some decent size storm right there on that edge. Oz not wanting to commit, and as a result, he's not really hurting Flash's economy. He's really just kind of putting a time ticker on himself, especially because he's not establishing bottom right, losing another potential Archon on High Templar right there. And Flash building, I'm wondering if he's got an Ultra Sten back here still. He really probably could make that transition if he wanted to. Looks like he, he doesn't need to is the thing. Dropping some Sunken Colonies just in case another army looking to support. Now is going to make his way bottom right and drop this Nexus. This is kind of cute. So we got a Nidus Canal being built, just now realizing, oop, there's a lot of army right there. So potentially initially moving a lot of that army to clear out bottom right, but doesn't want to leave things that way. It looks like Flash momentarily in the red, but still has a significant amount of supply. Top left is chugging. He's got just all sorts of drone saturation everywhere. Sending out a couple Zerglings just to spot. That's a lot of Archons, though. We got 10 Archons out in the field, a good amount of Psystorm behind this. The thing is, is Oz needs to commit to some location and invoke some damage on Flash or just get some magical trades somewhere on the field. Dark Swarm drop in to clear out this cannon line, and the probe transfer also canceled that Nexus bottom right. So it looks like Oz is going to be isolated to the bottom left quadrant, and Flash is going to happily build a bank behind this. Yeah, absolutely able to clear everything out. The Archon's going to reposition, maybe make another shot here top left. Some Reavers joining as well. Able to get some damage done. A lot of things piling through that Nexus, but having some 
or I should say Nidus, but having some trouble getting the forward field. But it's a clog both directions. The Archon's having trouble gathering past the Zealots. It looks like the Zealots were being drawn back and the Archons were being pressed forward, but they just kind of did a milling action right there instead. And as a result, they just ate a lot of Lurker fire underneath. Still, they're able, it looks like they're going to be able to break through here. The Reaver continuing to attack for us. Some Psystorm obliterating that Lurker line. And now a counterattack. It looks like the Lurkers from that 12 o'clock location going to go for a counterattack. And Oz just going to let that Reaver do the work and the Archons defend the flank. He only lost, what, three in the entirety of... Never mind, I don't think he lost any Archons. Maybe one in that attack altogether. More units coming through that Nidus. More Zerglings getting absolutely fried on the front lines, and things are just getting stormed as they're coming through that Nidus Canal. Finally, the Nidus down. I think Oz actually just happy, happy to dance back and forth and try to chew into Flash's economy. Finally now, taking this hatchery, Zealot in the line, that Defiler going to get wiped out. That top left probably going to get wiped out as well. But the follow-up problem for Oz is even though he's able to strike right here. There's still three active bases. There's the active base bottom right. His six o'clock is healthy. His mineral only, however, is mined out, and his nine o'clock is looking very thin, so he's very close to being just down to a single base, and he doesn't have a massive bank behind this. A couple lurkers being canceled on that morph. The wall of Archons able to press in. Looks like they're going to be able to clear a lot out. A lot out. The Hydralist Pressing through and cutting off a little bit of the reinforcement. It'll be a while if Oz wanted to try to move into upper left. It'll be a while before he can do so because of that creep. I guess that's kind of a latent advantage for Zerg, is you can't just... Versus Terran, where it's like you can't just wipe out the base and immediately move in. The Reaver on the low ground <laughs> being chased, looking to get some pot shots with some of those Reaver Scarabs. And the Archon's going to move in behind this. Looks like they're going to get wiped out, oof. But this is Psystorm bait, if there is one. Actually, a magnificent dodge from Flash right there, able to split those forces. I thought that was going to be an obliterative... Is that a word? Obliterative Psystorm. Another army moving out. This might be the last army we see, though, from Oz. Because, again, now he's... Yeah, he's running off two bases. Flash is now expanding bottom... Everything bottom right. So he controls the majority of the map. He's lost control top left, however. Lurker's dropping the Observer on that protective line. I still want to say it's anybody's game though, because Flash is mined out at his mineral only, his natural and his main. The three o'clock is gone, so he's technically down to just one base as well. So in one base versus just one base, usually Protoss is ahead. But he is starting to establish bottom right, and if he can get mining bottom right and create enough distraction top left for a period of time, he will still end up victorious. Now that he's dropping in supply here and there, he still has a supply lead. Lurkers along that edge, Oz looking for some sort of corner. He still hasn't managed to establish additional bases. I wonder if he's going to try to take another... So yeah, he's, he dropped a pylon. Starting to make motions bottom right. Flash needs to protect this, otherwise he will end up losing the game. This is really a, the, the risk point right here. Is Does this army wipe out Flash's bottom right holding, or does it get wiped out itself? If it, get, if it gets wiped out itself, that will be a Flash win. If it's able to take something out, then Flash will end up dropping to Oz. High Templar looking around trying to get some Psy Storm. I might have actually managed to land some Psy Storm there, hence the drop in probes. Cycling back around looking for another drop. It's a group of Hydralists there as well. Purple waving to the upper left. I think I missed some Psy Storm right there. I heard the, the action of it, but didn't see the, the drop of it. Oz also moving up top left, maybe to engage before these cannons. Are able to come online. Hydralisks hugging the wall, protecting that mineral only. It looks like he's now discovering there's still no Nexus here top left. Keep that in mind. Flash just oof, really limping in the resources right this second, and that High Templar is still active, trying to saturate bottom right. Not sure where his drones are located right this second, but they're not in the active front. It looks like some Psystorm ac accidentally taking out an Archon right there. Flash moving top left. Oz down a lot of supply. Ooh, those High Templar are getting caught. Nice Psy Storms, though. So at least getting some value out of them. They've been picked off. And now we have Dark Swarm being dropped top left. And with those Zerglings and Lurkers support, this is... We need some, some Psy Storm immediately. We've got a little bit of time. Oz trying to 
push back some beautiful side storm blind over the edge catching a lot of those defilers and flash doesn't have a lot left to throw at this although he's moving out some more zerglings and still no nexus established as this base is starting to get wiped out and it looks like there's no counter pressure looks like that shuttle might have some trouble from scourge bottom left and that is going to be it for the side storm so now the zerglings should be able to take on the and push out those zealots otherwise especially with those lurkers wipe out that forward cannon line and deny this nexus top left and that should be the game winning maneuver an overlord getting eaten right there lurkers up on the high ground it looks like plenty of zealots actually going to be able to push this back so the top left base is being held but and this is the the big underlying thing three bases now active bottom right for flash although the drones need to get move, uh, get a move on and with those three bases running and the six o'clock the only active base for oz he's slowly running out of time here a slew of high templar now in position just continuously dropping side storms to try to hold the line but the cannon slowly dropping and this is some massive and now the zerglings look like they've breached a reaver has been produced there is a shuttle here to maybe protect some of these units but more streams of zerglings making their way top left it looks like some lurkers also being left behind the lines to box out any sort of reinforcements that aren't coming from the air some nice little bit of reaver micro there to try to provide some time here but now the zerglings on top of the nexus also working on the robotic facility and it looks like yeah this is going to be pirate victory because the nexus down control loss top left and that should be gg and it looks like the scourge wandered up and cleared out the potential psi storm threat so now oz upon losing top left moving to bottom right to maybe stymie but this is too little too late Flash's economy starting to roll. This is a actually decent attack force. Zerglings continuing to flood in top left to check things out, but it's I don't think it's going to be sufficient. This is kind of a last hurrah here from Oz, although it's a solid last hurrah with the six Archons and not a lot here on the lowered field. Might even be able yeah, going to pot shot these lurkers from the low ground. Hydrosks pressing forward, but a wave of Scourge... Looks like they're going to get cleared by the Archons and protected otherwise. And I think this is it for Oz. He's kind of dancing in between. So it looks like there was an attempt at some distance mining there by probes, but a Lurker and a Hydralisk denying that. And the shuttle. This might be a mistake. Yeah, trying to drop and get some counter damage done. The Scourge almost able to wipe it out right there. This is all but one for Flash at this stage. we got 36 workers left. The last bits of minerals moving into the 9 o'clock. The 6 o'clock base is still running, but this is three bases up. And no bases established top left. If Oz could magically establish top left and continually apply pressure bottom right, he might be able to flip this. But right now, down 40 supply. He's getting good exchanges overall, I have to say. Really good Reaver Micro. And just picking off a few units here and there to get some good value. And that's really what it comes down to in the late game like this. But Zerglings, it's just going to be a, a little bit of time before this shuttle wanders too far away from the Archons. They're managing to get plagued and some actually a single grouping of Mutalisks might be able to wander up and wipe this up. But continual nice play from Oz. Oz really making a show of it here in the late game with this Reaver. Finally some Hydralisks and Zerglings crashing down on everything to the north. And a cap well, is he going to unload an attack from the opposite direction? Looks like he's going to hold. Only three Archons remaining. Top left is the Observer watching there. I was wondering if the unit was having some sort of peace treaty there, top left. A bunch of High Templar grouped up. More Hydralisks grouped up. Dark Swarm actually helping the Archons right here, negating the Hydralisk fire. But now, a massive move. Unfortunately, didn't catch the, the Scourge not catching the Observer or the Shuttle. The Reaver on the low ground. Zealots storming in. Beautiful Psy Storm. I feel like Flash is waiting for him to exit from this game. And as a result, he's actually losing a lot of these fights. Just getting obliterated. Overall, some beautiful Psy Storms from Oz. That Archon going to get wiped out. And that is it. There's GG. Now that that forward attack force has been taken. Flash takes it. Which I think was to be expected. But it uh, does show... Potential holes late game at least versus Protoss and his Zerg play for thoughts of uh, the upcoming ASL 
sure he'll fix them by the time that rolls around. Hope you guys enjoyed it overall. Thank you for listening.